of your uh, childhood friend Mudo. Like, all right, so you said the car was passing by. Yeah. How you, how did you know it was Latin Kings? They were yelling. They were yelling DK, King Love, you know what I'm saying? And I saw his face. I saw his face. The boy on the passenger side. Hector Reyes, I saw his face. And I'll never forget his face. So after, um, so you started, you started planning retaliation that day. Um, now I want to ask you, what made you choose Marilyn Maury Malando and Madeline Tutti Mendoza to do the mission with you? I didn't choose them. I okay. wasn't even trying to take them. Okay. Um, I was on my mission on my own. Okay. When I found out they were out on bond. Um, I was going for them okay. and I didn't I wasn't trying to bring anybody with me. I was actually getting ready to get in my car and Muñeca was the one that was like, I'm, I, I'm coming. Hold on. We're going. We're going to take my brother's car. Ooh. So I was like, oh, OK. And then Toothy was supposed to go out on a date with my my cousin. She was like, I want to ride. So they volunteered to come. Gotcha. It wasn't supposed to be what it was because they were there. The whole plan changed. Me personally, I was I was going to Beach and Spalding to do a shootout. You was gonna die, I was gonna die, we all was gonna die together, and I was okay with that. But because they came with me, the the plan changed. It was a different change. I was just gonna we were gonna go do a drive through, have them chase us back, and let the guys deal with it. That's the plan, the original plan, the post to be. But when we drove up there, and they drove up next to me, and I seen their face, the plan changed in my mind. I took over and did shit that I wasn't even told to do. That I was, I did shit on my own. Now you said something. You said that you found out they was on on bond. Yeah. How, how did you find out they was on bond? The um, Cook County Sheriff's paged me. We had we had officers, Cook County Sheriff's. They were working for us. You know what I'm saying? Some they were they were maniacs. And when the Cook County fucked up, their bond was five hundred thousand. And when they bonded out, they put it on the computer. The bond was five thousand, so they were bonded out at five thousand dollars. So the Cook County Sheriff's hurry up and page me nine one one to alert me that that they were out on bond, that they had posted bond. Hold on, so so so, this I got I got to clear this up. So the Cook County Sheriff's basically they were your co conspirators. Yeah. Co conspirators. Yes, they were. So they gave you the drop. Yes, they did. Wow. Yes, they did. Absolutely. All right, so Loka D. So you just told me something that was astounding. That the Cook County Sheriff's gave you the drop on who killed your best friend. No, they gave me the drop of them getting bonded out. They let me know when they was walking out the motherfucking door. They paged me that was like, bro... The people that just got bonded out for killing your friend. They are the ones that let me know. I would have never even known that they was out on bond because they had a $500,000 bond. And Cook County fucked up and dropped their shit to five hundred dollars on the computer. So they're the one that paged me let me know them niggas was coming out the door. Wow. All right, so um, if you could, can you walk us through that, that infamous day that in 1992? Yes. First, I would like to say out of respect for the victims' families and their friends, this is not a bragging. I'm not bragging. I have to go backwards in order to go forward. In order for me to help anybody out, or I have to share my whole story. That includes Loka D and the mistakes that she made. So with Correct. that being said, uh, yeah, I was paged to let me know that the guys were being out on bond. When I got the word, by the time I got to the county jail, they were already gone. So when I came back to the hood, that's when Muñeca and Tuti jumped in the car. We changed cars to her brother's car. We got in the car and we went over to Beach and Spalding. Um, mind you, give you a little history. The dude, did, Jimmy Cruz, who was a driver, I was just at his mother's house the night before. It was Mother's Day. And my mother, like I told you, my stepfather was a Latin king. He was over the Latin king. So my mother was a Latin queen. And majority of my family were all Latin kings. I was actually the only folks that came out of the family. So it was Mother's Day, and they were celebrating in his mother's house. I had called my mom and was like, I got a gift for you. I'll drop it off at Charleston. She was like, no, just come drop it off. I was like, the Latin kings were always known and told that 
as long as I had a family member with me, I was not to be fucked with. But if I was by myself, they can blow my motherfucking head off. So my step, I was like, just come on over. I'm going to be outside. You good? Ain't no shit going to happen to you. So I was like, okay. So I pulled up there. Now, went into his mother's house. And she was like, no, stay here. Eat with your mom. Enjoy Mother's Day. Where I was like, no, I'm, no, I'm not feeling not, I'm not feeling comfortable at all. Just went through what the fuck I went through with the Latin Kings. I did not want to go through it again. So she was like, no. So I sat there ate this lady's food. And not less than 24 hours later, I blew her son's head off. So I knew who the fuck the driver was. So when we when they pulled up beside of us, and they was like, what the fuck? He asked me, he was like, what the fuck you doing? I was like, look, I'm just chilling. I'm you know what I'm saying? I ain't on shit. You know, they just killed my friend. I'm not really just trying to relax. He saw the girl in the backseat and was like, damn. So his dick got to thinking. So he was like, well, follow us. The dude in the passenger side was talking all that shit. That nigga kept talking about, oh, you local D? And I'm sitting there like, I'm go I want to go so hard with this nigga right then and there. I'm like, yeah, y'all heard the rumor. Now meet the legend, local D in the flesh. So this nigga kept talking about like, yeah, you ain't shit. Well, I was like, yeah. So dude in the path on the driver's side was like, follow us to the park. You lured us to the park. They always saying that we lured them to the park. They were never lured to the park. They lured us to the park. When we got to the park, he still was talking shit, telling his friend, you got the pencil. Don't forget the pencil. So I, I tapped on my gun because I sure got mines. So the whole time he talking all this shit, we get into the bathroom. Soon as we get into the bathroom, we're not even, my whole foot is not even in the bathroom yet before this nigga got a whole dick out. This nigga talking about, yeah, you scared of some dick? What, you, you don't want nothing? So I'm like, what the, f he was just talking, like, in my mind, I'm like, he was just talking all this gangster shit outside. What the fuck, I was a bitch, and I, I ain't went about that life. But yet I come in, and you thinking about fucking. So the nigga stopped laughing, but what, you don't want to, uh, so you don't want to give me nothing, why? Because I killed your boy? So as soon as he said that, he couldn't even turn all the way before I had to pull out my gun and blew his brains out. Let me ask you this. All right, so that park, uh, the park that they, they allergic, to, allergic to was Humble Park, right? Yes, it was Humble Park. And that, at that time, that was predominantly a Latin King. Yes, that, that part of it. That part of where the bathroom is at yeah. and where the softball field is at, that is still Latin King territory. So if common sense would tell people that you didn't learn them, of course, why would you take them to a Latin King part of the park? True. True. But you know, when they labeled me the monster, they labeled me, they said I, the way I committed my crime that Al, 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 what's his name? Al Capone would be proud of. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? They labeled me the biggest female hit woman, all types of shit. And said I lured them. Some some news people said I lured them and killed them for a slice of pizza. Some called me the kiss of death. You know, they have their own stories. That's why I was so I ended up doing interviews to say my side of the story because everybody has their own when they read my shit up or they think about me, some you don't know what the fuck happened, you wasn't there. There's only three people that can say what was five people that can say what happened, and two of them are dead. So you was never there to know the actual two. The other two people are not talking. They're playing their innocent role because I took the weight. So they're playing their innocent role. They got to get paid. But other than that, I'm the only one talking. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm the only one that's able to keep it 100 and let them know, yes, I'm guilty. I did what I did. I took the weight. I, I ain't fold on no motherfucking buddy. I did 31 years on my motherfucking back. Was told I was going to die in prison. Was told by the judge he wanted to see me come home with gray hair carried out in a wooden casket. Yeah, I came home with gray hair, but I sure the fuck wouldn't carry it out in a wooden casket. Um, when you put when when you met the, the two the two victims, did it Pat did it come across your mind that this was actually a setup to kill you? It didn't matter to me. I yeah. never thought that I would live to see sixteen anyway, so I didn't give a fuck. Okay. Either way, somebody was gonna die. Yeah. It they I knew they wanted me dead. I told you earlier, I never thought that I would live past 16. I paid for my own funeral. I never thought that I would even see my birthday of May 29th. You know what I'm saying? So that wasn't a, that didn't come across my mind. I didn't give a fuck. It was either going to be you or me. Now, uh, at, uh, at this time, your, your stepfather was a high-ranking member of the Latin yes. Kings. Uh, did they know this? Yeah. They actually, after I committed my murders... A Latin king actually drove past us and saw the dead body outside. They knew nothing about the body inside the bathroom. 
but they saw me standing over the dead body outside. He called my stepfather and he told my stepfather, he was like, your daughter just killed one of our guys. So he was like, what you think I'm going to do? So my stepfather was like, let her go. He was like, I, he was like, what you want? He was like, you give me some, some cocaine and I won't go get the guys. So they made a deal. So that's how I lived at that park because my stepfather made a deal with him and told him, don't get the guys. I'll give you this cocaine. Let my daughter go. So by the time I got into the car, my father was already paging me because he had already knew what I had did it. Wow. So your, your stepfather basically gave you, he paid for the passage for you to get to get out that park. To get out the park. He did pay for the passage for me to get out the park because that dude could have easily went to them and told them, like, bro, local D's in our park and she just killed one of our boys. I would have never made it out that side of the park. I'm from the other side of the park, but I would have never made it to the other side because I would have to pass three to four neighborhoods of Latin Kings in order to make it to my, my neighborhood. Yeah. So without him doing that, I would have died on site. All right. So um, after the after that after that incident occurred in the in the park, um, they they said that you would um, y'all y'all made it back to y'all section. Um, now, a couple of other documentaries said basically that y'all was bragging about the incident. I wasn't. The two girls that were with me, mm -hmm. as soon as we got back to the neighborhood, they jumped out the car. Oh, look at D. She killed him. Oh, look at D. Did this. Look at D. Did that. My cousin with that was there. He was like, you dumb bitch. You finna go to jail. I was like, what? He was like, get in a fucking car and let's go. So I was like, man, why ain't he was like, get in the car. My stepfather was already paging me, telling me to come home. So he paged him, was like, I got loca. I got her. He was like, bring her to me. So on the way home, they were bragging. So that by the time I made it three blocks over, motherfuckers was already flagging me down. I heard what you did. Folks, I saw what you did. We on our way to the park now. I was like, on the way to the park? What the fuck is y'all doing? My cousin was like, I'm taking you to go get your gun melted. You're, you know what I'm saying? You're finna go to jail. You're going to jail. If you don't go to Puerto Rico, you're going to jail. So I was like, I'm going to Puerto Rico. Shut the fuck up. Let's just go see what they talking about at the park. So we went to follow them into the park. These niggas was there at the park taking the guys' drugs, chains, stripping their car. Like you. And then my, one of my co-defendants were grabbing the brains and putting it in a plastic bag. They came back and took the brains and hung them up on a life pole. I was so high. I was smoking weed, drinking. I was just like, fuck it. I just jumped in my car and left. I didn't get locked up the next day because it was the funeral of my friend. Exactly. And I went to the funeral. But they didn't, they didn't give a fuck about none of that shit. They didn't. All right. So uh, you, uh, the, funeral, uh, the funeral was the, the next day. Yes. All right. Now, you were caught because of an informant. Yes. Uh, and she was part of the Maniac Latin yes. Disciples. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you do do you mind if, if we mention her name? I mention it, baby. Mention it. All right. So <laughs> if, if Yvette Rodriguez from your own game, from the Maniac Latin, uh, the uh, from the Maniac Latin Disciples. Yes. Uh, she gave you up. Yes, she did. And it's kind of amazing how she gave you up because she was on federal probation, correct? Mm-hmm. She caught a new charge. By the same detectives that locked her up. Yes. And to get out of that charge, she pointed us out. At the funeral. Actually, we was in the hood. They thought it was so quiet. She pointed us out in the hood. She was at the funeral, did her thing with the uh, undercover van or whatever. We didn't know nothing of it. But they videotaped us at the funeral. Um, the feds were already on us because they were trying to give us RICO charges. So they was actually investigating me for RICO charges way before I even caught my murder. They, to tell you the truth, people don't even know that the feds could have prevented these boys from dying. You followed us, bro. You were following me. You were following me to give me RICO charges. You could have prevented these boys from dying, but you didn't want to. You didn't want to throw in your investigation. Hold on, hold on. So is Spliff D TV getting exclusive right now? Yes, a very big exclusive. So Loka D, are you saying at this time the feds was investigating the Maniac Latin disciples under uh, RICO charges? Yes, we were going down, and they was videotaping us. They have videos of me by my car. They have videos of the scene of the crime. Me going to the park. They have videos of all that, but did not want to mess up their investigation and let me catch these murders. When I caught my murders, one of my guys took, my, took the 15 years feds because they, they didn't want me no more. I had a murder. There was nothing to do. I was getting life in prison. 